The Interfaith Chapel is the Center for Religious and Spiritual Life on campus for students, faculty, and staff. We have people who come here who believe a particular thing and are affiliated with a particular religious tradition, and we also have folks who come here for our activities who have no particular religious affiliation. Uh, we've been doing interfaith on this campus in this chapel for 40 years, and when the chapel was first built, interfaith was Christian and Jewish. And in that 40 plus years, it's now a much bigger um, tent than it was in the beginning. And we have a sort of twofold focus here. We're supporting those who feel committed to a particular religious tradition, but we also promote interfaith engagement. We currently have 10 different religious groups that are affiliated with the chapel. We've got Muslim and Jewish and several Christian and uh, Buddhist and Hindu. And we have uh, student groups that are affiliated with the chapel, um, the very, and a very active one in interfaith engagement, the Student Association for Interfaith Cooperation. And they're the group that pretty much ties together all the other groups and gets them to do interfaith programming together. So tonight we're hosting an event with Dr. Shafiq, who's a local interfaith religious leader. So I'm greeting people as they come in. And then we kind of just gathered people who are interested in interfaith to hear from a local community leader and to connect with the campus. The word interfaith dialogue is a very new word, in fact. 1989, and I will give you a little history. So when you hear this word, what it means to you? understand and to learn from each other instead of trying to convince the other people that they're wrong. <laughs> I love bringing people of different religious traditions and students of no tradition um, together to find the things that they have in common and the things that they value together. University of Rochester's Christian Fellowship has been around about 27 or 28 years at this point. Um, I just like to sing and I love to see God here. We are usually the most diverse ministry on campus. Uh, as far as religious groups or, or Christian groups that, that are here, um, but we cover every corner of the earth uh, and it's a wonderful time because we bring all that together at Melton Pot and I'd like to say that we have a little slice of heaven here on earth. So what we're going to do for tonight is hold an informational session for Hijabi Fair Day, which is an event that's a part of our annual Islam Awareness Week and allows students the opportunity to wear a headscarf or a support pin in support of and in solidarity of women on campus who choose to wear the headscarf as a part of their faith. I think uh, hijab or covering uh, self is one of the most uh, obvious and most uh, seen uh, thing about Islam and Muslims. Um, Islam Awareness Week is all about promoting tolerance, respect, understanding, and that applies beyond religion, that applies to everything. I hope that this is a leeway for people to, to approach each other, talk to each other, and understand each other a little bit better. Crew has a weekly meeting that meets once a week on Thursday nights. A typical weekly meeting uh, starts with about 15 minutes of socializing, uh, then it goes into um, an activity, uh, some kind of game, some kind of get-to-know-you activity. We want to be a community where students are really caring for one another, a place where we can be real, honest, and vulnerable about our lives. And, and we want to be a community where all that's possible because we believe a relationship with God is possible through Jesus Christ. And tonight at the Interfaith Chapel, we are holding a Interfaith Thanksgiving banquet with a guest speaker, Chris Stedman from Yale University, where he is the executive director of the Yale Humanist Community. I am on the SAKE mailing list. I just really like their events, and I really like all the like religious cooperation and learning about different religions, so yeah. We have the Roman Catholic Newman community and the Protestant Chapel community. Both of these communities have been here on this campus for 50 years. They just hit their 50-year anniversaries last year. So the Catholic Newman community is uh, the largest single denomination on campus. We serve about 1,600 Catholics on, on campus, 30% of the population. And we sponsor over 120 programs each year that engage from the spiritual, the social, to the academic, and uh, discovery faith and reason together. Many people see faith as opposed to reason, as if it's an either-or option. And here on the science campus, we uh, definitely take the stance that they're very compatible. PCC is a multi-denominational group. Um, kids from all different um, Protestant Christian backgrounds, some of them from backgrounds that are not Protestant Christian, who have all come together to worship and be a church on campus here. Also, like pretty much all faith groups, once you've captured the fact that we're eating, you've captured the essential part of our group. Thank you, God, for giving us food. Thank you, God, for giving us friends. For the food we eat and the friends we eat. Thank you, God, for giving us food. 
we do a lot of food in the chapel. People can get free meals here several nights a week with one religious community or another. Well, food's important here because obviously students like to eat and actually religious students often have religious restrictions on what they can eat and so one thing they learn when they start doing interfaith etiquette is learning about each other's dietary restrictions and how to be hospitable to one another and all religious cultures have special foods and so often they will do things where there's something special to a particular tradition that's being served and others get to sample that and enjoy it too having Diwali dinner. This is a yearly event we usually do around the fall time. It changes every year based on the calendar. We do this um, usually in Douglas Dining Hall and we've been preparing for this ever since the start of school actually. The light kind of symbolizes the victory of good over evil and that's why we are here today. It's not just a festival for Hindus, it's a festival for everyone so we can celebrate the victory of good. Evil. Great people, great food. It's a, just a good time. Celebrate a good event. Yeah. Happy Hanukkah, happy Hanukkah, everybody. There are donuts and latkes against the wall. You can line up and enjoy some donuts, latkes on both sides. We're gonna eat latkes, we're gonna have souffignon, which are donuts, and we're going to um, have fun. Brought to light the menorah, which is a symbol of freedom and we are going to have hundreds of students pause in the middle of finals and see what is important to celebrate the holiday of Hanukkah together as a community. I love bringing people of different religious traditions and students of no tradition um, together to find the things that they have in common and the things that they value together and engaging in conversation and discovering that they can make friends across lines of division that they didn't think they could make friends. We're so grateful to be part of that community to get to dialogue and, and really work towards uh, interfaith collaboration. God created us um, as we are, so God didn't want us to be one single nation. So if he had willed, he would have done so, but he did not. It's important that people, regardless of faith and belief, come together and you know take the time to learn about what what the other person believes in. And I think you are great for starting that initiative. And I've had a great experience working with people from the interfaith cooperation, and hope to do so again in the future. <laughs> a production of the University of Rochester. Please visit us online and subscribe to our channel for more videos.